In this portion of In-Depth, what a minority party looks like and what are the federal parties promising if they win? Let's take a closer look. The political party that makes up the government must command the support of the House of Commons, not simply have the most MPs. What that means is they must have a majority of MPs that vote to support big government things like a throne speech or a budget. This can be confusing because historically, Canadian government has more often than not held a majority of seats in the House of Commons, meaning they can easily get enough support. So what happens if there's no majority but instead a minority? Well, that's called a hung parliament and it's a bit more complicated. The party that wins the most seats in a general election is usually invited to form government. If the party wins half or less than half of the seats in the House of Commons, but has the most seats, then its leader becomes the Prime Minister and he or she appoints cabinet ministers. Because seats are distributed more evenly among parties in a minority government, opposition parties have a greater opportunity to block legislation from passing. A minority government must therefore gain the confidence of the House. In other words, they must negotiate with other parties and adjust its policies in order to garner the majority of votes required to pass legislation. If they are unable to gain the confidence of the House, another party has an opportunity to try and gain the confidence of the House. In order to do this, however, you typically need another party to support you. If these two parties decide to support each other, that doesn't necessarily make them a coalition. It just means one of the parties is the party that commands the will of the House for the time being, and are about to form government. So now that we know how our government works, and knowing that a party with the most seats in a minority might not govern, let's take a look at the top three political parties in this federal election and what they're promising. Let's start with the Conservatives and Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who has held office for the last 10 years and is looking to extend that reign for four final years. The Harper government has promised tax cuts for families, specifically those with young children. This includes an increased universal child care benefit of $160 a month for children under the age of 6 and $60 a month for those aged 6 to 17. And for education, the Conservatives have targeted educational saving plans and Harper has committed to investing federal grants into both parents and young people saving for their post-secondary career. The NDP party and the Liberals disagree with Harper and the Conservatives on a number of different points. NDP leader Tom Mulclair has had a dedicated student-oriented platform from the beginning of the race, but most recently has turned up his student debt promises to attract more youth. Mulclair has launched his plan to tackle student debt, committing to phase out interest on student loans altogether and adding $250 million to 74,000 new student grants. After Mulclair's comments on women wearing niqibs during citizenship ceremonies, he's lost a big group of supporters in Quebec. The Liberals have historically been the primary option for left-wing voters, despite losing out on official opposition status in the last federal election. Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have proposed from the beginning a $1,000 tax benefit for education that is usually paid out of pocket. More recently, Trudeau promised a freeze on interest rates on student debt until the student is making at least $25,000 per year in wages. The Liberals have attacked many of the Conservatives' promises, stating that their family tax splitting would be a $2 billion tax break for the top 15% of Canadians. In short, the Liberals are looking to support students' families from the onset, where the NDP are looking to tackle student debt during and after their education. What all three leading parties do agree on fiscally is the need to balance the budgets and reduce small business tax. As the votes are coming in, whatever the outcome is for this federal election, now you know what it will all mean. For more in-depth coverage, visit our website electionzone.ryersonian.ca.